Hello listeners, and welcome to this week's bonus episode of With Love, Victoria. This week we are celebrating the season and series finale. Can you believe it? I'm creator Rachel Garnett, and today I'm joined by not one, but two absolutely iconic, fantabulous women, Kayla Hendry, a.k.a. Queen Victoria, and Grace Velasco, a.k.a. Princess Beatrice. Welcome to the podcast, ladies. <laughs> Correct. Uh, what a journey, guys. Yeah. I can't. I mean, honestly, this episode has already become the most unhinged interview you've done with any of the actors <laughs> from this so season. I'm so sorry. Rachel. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Um, for the audience's awareness, we've actually been recording for about five minutes before we realized that these two were not wearing headphones, and so you could hear all of me talking on their side, and editing was going to be a nightmare. And so here we are. Well, and to be clear, the first five minutes. They were just us talking about Connor Scott and Connor Delves. Oh yeah, we're fully obsessed. We're This is a Connor-heavy app. Well, and then let's pick up right where we left off. Grace, what is your favorite thing about Connor Delves? Oh, his beautiful, buttery Australian voice. And Kayla, what is your favorite thing about Connor Scott? Oh my gosh, Connor Scott is... There was this one time that we were recording lines, and for 20 minutes after we recorded lines, he just pretended that he was friends with Prince William and Prince Harry, and he <laughs> he did this for 20 minutes straight. He needed no input from me or you, Rachel, and it was, he's just a delight. Wow, your answer was so much better than mine. No, but yours was so thought. Yours was more precise, and I, I really had to try to not go into a full story because. Yeah, but you something... have this beautiful personal anecdote, and I'm like, I just love Connor Delves' voice. He's an amazing person and actor as well. Oh, but Grace, tell us about the first time you actually met him in person. Oh yeah, so Connor and I uh, were two ships passing in the night. I was on the West Side Highway in Tribeca just walking around and Connor Delves just like gallivants for a lack of a better word. Like he's running with somebody and the way he runs past me, I knew it was him immediately. And I just turned to him and I was like, oh, Connor. And he looked at me as if to like, Oh, who's this weird person speaking to me in, on the West side highway as one does. And it was, he immediately recognized and his face lit up, but he didn't stop running. <laughs> and I was like, bye. And then I messaged him later on Instagram and it was funny, but I was just like, oh God, I'm in, I'm in deep. I'm a married woman. Um, but, you know, totally in love with Connor. In yeah. love. It was like a celebrity sighting. <laughs> Grace is a runner too. Yeah, I but just like, want to talk about, they're both runners. I'm, so. a, I'm a runner like in parentheses. Connor mm -hmm. is like a, he's like a runner, you know, it's like. Yeah. Well, Connor, Scott, and I usually eat food together. Yeah, right. So, like, bagels. So, that's, um, it, we're, like, a little bit different in that way. I also am, like, I was just thrown into this experience, you know, much later than everyone else. So, unfortunately, I don't have the anecdotes, but I'm happy yeah. to be here. But And Grace and I are in the same room right now, and we have life anecdotes t from together, because we've known each other. Well, I mean, Grace wouldn't even be here without our resident casting director, Kayla Hendry, here. Yeah, wow. It's true, thanks. You should be getting commissioned for that. <laughs> Actually, Kayla, yes, I'm happy to give you 10% of the zero dollars we've made off of this podcast. I love that. I'll take it. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy to help out. No, that's really generous. That was yeah, it really was. It's it was, nice to see people do the you right know, thing. I, I'm a I work in a nursery school and we always say it's the process, not the product. And I feel I feel that here today. Well, okay. Then let's talk about the process. Here we are at the end of the road. Kayla, you've been with us for four years? No, that's a lie. It's been since 2019. I don't, I'm not good with time and the passing of it. I just make up numbers. Hey, but it's don't been, look now. It's, that's some, almost four years. It's almost four years. So 20, I think it was July. J oh my God. When is New Year's Day? January 1st, right? So January, I'm also completely sober as I'm speaking right now. Just putting that out there. So I just, this is me in real life speaking. <laughs> okay, so Kayla, you've been with us for three years. Grace, you've been with us for um, uh, a year and a half now. So what's it like getting to the end of this journey? Uh, let's start with Grace since you're the newer one. I'm going to put you on the spot here. What have you learned? What have you lost? What else? <laughs> wow. Uh, wow, that's, you're going to be lot to unpack at the moment. I I feel overall it's been so exciting to kind of take 
something as creative and interesting as this show and put it in the medium as of a podcast that we all record remotely. I think I've, I've reiterated this several times at this point, but I'm just going to say again how, how kind of exciting and new it's been to work on this independently in my home with a team and almost feel like we're in the same room the way that we record it live especially using Zencaster where we're we're you know we're live together all of season one me and Connor would just be feeding off of each other as in as if we're in the same room and that's just so fascinating to me it really sustained me through the pandemic and now kind of just getting back to real life it's it's turned into such a such a fun engaging uh like piece of brain food for me to work on these lines and songs in my in my downtime from my you know day job so (laughs) and Kayla let's talk about you I mean it's been such a wild and beautiful experience Grace's answer was so meticulously well spoken and mine's going to like just blob on the ground but um it's been such an amazing experience. I mean, initially this was going to be a stage show. And I remember when everything was happening with the pandemonium, we were kind of like, when you said, hey, I want to make this into a podcast. I was just so excited to not only continue working with these characters, but I got to be united with people who had moved away from New York or I lived in different states and I don't get to see but I love working with like Rory um or even people I didn't even know before like Colton in season one um so it's just been a really special experience and it's been fun this is the longest I've ever lived with a character and she's just it's been so interesting to not only learn about Victoria but see the nuances about her and her life and see everybody bring these characters to life um themselves and it's just been really special I don't think anything like this will ever happen again this is lightning in a bottle so well and Kayla something I wanted to say to you was that it's been so fun and such a privilege to get to build this with you you know I remember the days when you would just come over to my apartment and you know we'd be singing at three o'clock in the afternoon and the people downstairs would bang on the floor oh yeah they would get so mad yeah so we knew we had something special when they were begging us to stop (laughs) Um, and then getting to work with you, Grace, it was such a wonderful addition to have you come and join us, talk about Lush's voices. Your voice just, I feel like, embodied this character of Beatrice, and it was so lovely bringing you into the family and just having you on the team. I feel like you were definitely the missing piece. Thank you so much. That's really such a thoughtful and kind compliment. Thank you. Well, you know, I considered inviting you on this podcast just to insult you and call you demeaning names, but I thought maybe I should take that another direction. No, this is a very generous alternative. I I really appreciate it. I, um, you know, high school Kayla is actually really shocked and honored that she got to be a part of a podcast with um, the Bleeding Love soloist. Stop. No. From the other show choir at the Garfield Heights show choir competition in Ohio in 20, uh, 2009, maybe? Is that 2009. Right 2009. Approximately 32 years um, ago. Which was the first time I heard Grace singing. And I never thought I would be on the same level as her. And now we're in a podcast together. Oh, and that's one of my favorite things that I've gotten to do. The Bleeding Love solo. Yes, the Bleeding Love solo in With Love, Victoria. Yes, Rachel. She came out in her black and white and red dress. Stop. We'll it was a black life. and white dress with a red lip, but oh, let's that's not it, get that's into it. that okay. right now. So <laughs> I, I just want to highlight uh, in a slightly different direction, but something that I really enjoyed doing in this season that was a little different and at first a little intimidating than the first season. The first season we were always, at least in my experience, I always recorded everything live dialogue wise with the actor that was recording it. And this season I spent a lot of it recording with you, Rachel, which was lovely. I can't believe how seamlessly people like my scene partners were integrated into that experience when we did not record it together. I just want to point out to the audience one more time just how how miraculous it is that Rachel's able to put this together yeah. remotely with all of these with all of this talent. It's just when I when I listen back and I listened to the season thus far on my run this morning and I was just like I was just in awe of how this feat comes together remotely. Um, I did just want to mention again, like just how insane that is. And also 
I did a lot of my singing this season as duets with other characters that recorded it at, in different sessions than me. And whether it be me recording first or vice versa, people were just so um, careful and thoughtful to make sure we were together. You know, everyone was such a good scene partner to each other. Everyone really cared about the outcome so much. And I think that that translated really well. Well, and I think a great example of that um, is your duet with Chris in How Do I Say Yes. Your harmony is so effortless there. And, you know, I hope that the audience would never be able to guess that you aren't in the same recording session in the same room. Yeah, exactly. And especially when we were having moments when, you know, you decided we wanted to be on different vocal lines last minute, Mm -hmm. you know, both of us adapted very quickly. And I just so appreciated having that energy in the cast to do that on a whim. I also I have another shout out I want to give to you, Rachel, (laughs) in that frequently uh, in this season, there were a lot of songs for Victoria that were very low Um, because she's older and I was lucky enough to have had laryngitis for most of the recording of this season (laughs) um so that which ended up working in my favor but a lot of the music it was deep and I was having difficulty singing it because of said laryngitis and you would immediately I would record something and the next day you would say Kayla I fixed it don't worry sing it in this different key and so you were just so flexible and willing to work with anything we needed for this season to make it work and to make us feel our most confident in what we were recording. And that's a big thanks for you. No, I mean, (laughs) the least I can do is, you know, give you a key that is comfortable and sets you up for success when you're doing all this work and you're helping bring to life my story and my characters. So it was absolutely my pleasure. And um, I bet we could sit here for 25 to 40 years more just complimenting each other and how much we love each other and I love you and you love me and the audience loves us and we all love each other. But it's uh, actually high time that we turn to some audience-submitted questions. Oh. Oh, dang! (laughs) Yes, we were absolutely inundated. Uh, Our inbox was overflowing. I sifted through these for hours. So um, here are the three questions that we received. Whoa. Oh, yeah, we're ready. Nice and slow, Rachel. All right, then. First up on the docket. What was your favorite thing about playing your character? Um, I think my favorite part about playing Victoria so far is being with her um, for the entire duration of her life. I've never played somebody that ages uh, so vastly during the period of the work, and so it's been interesting to play her at 13 and then to play her when she's about to pass away um I've never spent such a a such a long time with a character in general through the course of working on something but b played someone at so many different ages um so it was interesting to see how she might develop how she might change and I think something this season in particular does is it you know, when she's younger, she has to bow down to a lot of people and make things work and listen to others. But in this season, it's really all about her. And so I think what's been particularly fun and challenging for this season is she's not a forgiving character. Um, She, you know, obviously had what we would know now is depression and um, stress and anxiety. Uh, But at the time, they were like, oh, she's just this is her. Her husband died, so she doesn't have a life anymore. Um, So I think it's been interesting, you know, to give her that grace of and understand, (laughs) give her the grace. I'm with grace. (laughs) That's my name. Um, (laughs) But, and understanding in that respect, but also to recognize the fact that she was not a wholly nice person and that she was very self-centered and, you know, which also I'm sure came with being royalty at that time. Um, but it's just, that's been really interesting. And also just to develop, oh, how does one's voice change as they're older? I list, I have, um, in particular, Grace and I had a college professor who I'm very close with. And I based a lot of my, um, older Victoria on her speech cadences. (laughs) And so I, I would just call her and talk to her on the phone for two hours. And then we would get off the phone and I would try to mimic her accent uh her voice in a british accent she's from chicago so um but it was just very that was also exciting for me to develop that voice as well very nice and grace 
I think my answer is a little bit basic, but authentic one in the same. I really loved the music that you wrote for Beatrice. Like, oh, I loved um, that you gave this character such main character energy, even though she was living her entire life for her mother and not for herself at all. It's so interesting to go over the lyrics in my music and think about how thoughtful she was about her own life, yet how tragic it was that that never translated for her. And I find a lot of those those challenges that Beatrice faces in my own life, so I identify with that, and I empathize with it, and I hope to bring it to life accurately. So it makes me very emotional and makes me feel really invested in this work. Well, something that I think you did just so beautifully was you avoided kind of this pitfall that could have made her character boring and her arc kind of dull because, you you know, you mentioned how isolated she is, but you made that isolation dynamic and heartfelt and emotional. And it was always such a privilege to get to hear you in this lonely world. And, you know, as, as much as I love the compliment you gave me, th- those songs and those moments wouldn't be the same without you performing them. Oh, thank you, Rachel. You are more than welcome. But let's go into our next question here. What was the most surprising thing you learned from the history? Okay, uh, this is a bit of a naughty story. Oh, I know where this is going. I think you know where this is going. Mm-hmm. Um, so something that que- I can't remember if I talked about this uh, in my last interview, but something that Victoria really liked to do was get it on. And by get it on, I mean have sex with her partners. And um, she would talk about it in depth in her diaries. And in particular, when she was with John Brown, uh, I believe it's a doctor wrote uh, in his journal or diary that he walked into her their her bedroom and her and John Brown she had her skirts up, he had his pants down, and she was saying, no, it looks like this. And he was saying, no, it looks like this, because they had seemingly given each other venereal disease. <gasps> I know that there's probably other things that are more couth to talk about, but I just think that story's wild, and this is the information people want to hear. So this is what I'm here Give for. Give the people what they want, This Kayla. is what I want to know about, so... That was a crazy story for me. Well, to clarify, the doctor's diary didn't say that they had venereal disease, um, but they d- did certainly have their pants uh, down in the moment. Um, but something that's really fascinating about, you know, this whole aspect then is, like, Beatrice had to edit these diaries. And, like, there's a part in the diary uh, where Victoria is writing about Albert and he's come in from the rain after horseback riding and she says something along the lines of seeing the outline of his manhood through his pants and I think, like, being excited. But, like, Beatrice had to edit these diaries. That's what she left in. What did she cut out? (laughs) Also, like, poor Beatrice had to read all of these things that her mother had said. I didn't Could you know imagine that. reading a parent, like you're reading through, I'm sorry, there was a very loud car that just went past my apartment, but could you imagine you're like getting your parents' diaries and just reading this in these in-depth interludes about them being sexy together and just no thanks, friends, no thanks. Well, you know, it does kind of shine a new light on that last moment with you and Beatrice together where, you know, you say, please, remove me from the page what we're realizing now is she's just saying please remove the pornography from my diary you're like yeah literally that whole line (laughs) was like i was pretty horny in my youth so can you just make sure no one knows that about me thanks bye (laughs) and that's it um and grace what was something interesting you learned about beatrice along the way something that comes to my mind right away when you ask that question is most recently in the episodes we've heard so far is how just kind of wildly xenophobic her family was Mm -hmm. um towards outsiders you know whether it be john brown or the munchie or anyone it was just i i felt extreme disappointment in the climate we're living in right now you know looking back and seeing the precedents that they set you know when when they sent the munchie away when victoria died you know it's like these these people were having real real problems in their family but a lot of it just stemmed from racism and xenophobia and i i cannot defend that and yet i have to 
this character who's genuinely just so disdainful for the friendship that her mother had with somebody that's not from, you know, the country and make it human. And it was, it was a huge challenge. So I guess that's what's interesting. (laughs) Well, and this actually leads nicely into something that I wanted to discuss. uh, One of the questions that I had for you guys, which is, you know, we leave the end of this story with Beatrice showing then Princess Elizabeth, soon to be Queen Elizabeth, with the diaries of Queen Victoria, this reconstructed Victoria. And so I'm so curious, do you consider the end of this show a happy ending, a sad ending, the greatest con pulled in history? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. This question, it's making me think back to Dana Schwartz um, on a podcast, and she hosts this really great I keep saying podcast, uh, called Noble Blood. And she was on, she was talking about Catherine the Great and, um, kind of how people take women in history and really specifically princesses and queens that we consider to be like badass ladies in history, um, and build them up and expect them to have to just be these gorgeous, fantastic people. And, oh, we should aspire to this. Um, And I think that this season, you know, is, it's delicate because it it starts to unravel the fact that that is not necessarily true and that these people were people and they were, you know, like Grace said, xenophobic and that they had hate. And um, so I think that you know, it it really brings into view that these people were people. Yes, they had, they were in positions of power that they were born into that they didn't necessarily earn. And they actually, in fact, did not earn at all. But, um, you know, in regards to your question, it's, it can be ambiguous, the ending, because I think that depends on how you feel about the monarchy still existing in England. Mm, very diplomatic answer there, Miss Hendry. I hope that was diplomatic enough. I I mean, all I would add to that is just that I I totally agree. And I think that Beatrice would be happy with that as well, just because she, it's her life's work, right? And seeing it passed down and it quite literally becoming the narrative of Queen Victoria's monarchy, like her time in the monarchy, I should say. It's, It's very fitting for the attempts at which Beatrice tried to make everything right and make everything worthwhile. I think for me as an author, it's really great to hear that the ending is ambiguous based off of, you know, how you lean and how you've related to this story. Because, you know, obviously I don't want the audience coming away being like, yeah, they were right to be mean to John Brown or Abdul Karim. But I also want people to think, you know, okay, I understand why they did what they did. You know, I don't condone it, but these were people, as Kayla said, and we want there to be some sort of sympathy. And I want the ending to be yours as an audience to decide how you feel. Um, But before we go, let's get to this final question. This is a deep one, guys. Hunker down. Um, Sweet or savory? Oh. Savory, always. Uh Sweet. Yeah, I'm a sweet girl as well. Um, But before we go, ladies, any last thoughts, any last things you wish to share to the listening crowd before we end this journey? I would just love to say that I like just so appreciate being welcomed with open arms. I love listening back to our work, uh, you know, on Apple Podcasts and YouTube and everything and feeling like we really made something so special that is not going to happen again. Even if you continue with this project in another way, this is just such a special medium to have this captured on. At the time we made it, it was so special and unlike anything I've ever done. You will always be the original cast. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I would just like to echo that sentiment, I think. You said it so beautifully. I don't don't feel as though I need to add anything. Thank you, Rachel, for making this a thing. Oh, well, thank you, guys. And thank you, dear listeners, for coming along for two seasons to learn about Victoria and her diaries. We have really appreciated you sharing in this story with us, and we hope that you had a most wonderful time with love. All of us here with Love, Victoria. (laughs) Bye, guys. Peace. 
Hawaii. <laughs>